Hi, my name is Zhengyi, and I'm a master's student at CMU. Today, I will present our work, 3D Human Motion Estimation via Motion Compression and Refinement. Our code will be made available on the project website. We tackled the problem of recovering 3D human pose and shape from monocular videos. Recently, state-of-the-art 3D pose estimation methods has been achieving amazing results. However, when we view these extracted human motion against a plain background, as shown here, we can often see artifacts such as awkward gates or jittery, resulting in an overall unnatural 3D motion recovery. This is especially detrimental to applications such as animation or action recognition, where artifacts such as these can lead to biases or jarring experience. To tackle this issue, we developed a novel two-stage method which breaks down human motion estimation in a coarse to fine manner. Given an input video, our method first generates a coarse estimation of the overall motion through motion compression, and then refines it against image evidence to come up with a final fine estimate. To achieve this, we first learn a human motion subspace using a variational autoencoder from a large space from a large human motion database, a mass. We learn a compressive human motion model that can represent a sequence of human motion using a 512 dimensional latent code. We formulate this, this model as a sequential VAE using gated recurrent units, GRUs. As we want to learn a robust latent space that can represent a broad spectrum of human motion, this VAE needs to generalize well. Thus, Ample data augmentation, such as flipping the motion left and right, spinning it up and down, is used to help the model adapt to unseen motion sequences. Notice that this VAE processes 90 frames of motion at a time. After we learn this human motion VAE, we freeze the decoder and use its latent space as a regression target. Given an input video, we first extract per frame features and then we learn an additional video encoder to directly predict motion latent code from the visual features. Basically, we are learning a model to summarize 90 frames of input video into a single 512 dimensional latent code. Due to the compressive nature of this process, lots of human, human motion information is lost, but it forms a good estimate of the car's motion. Later, we train an additional regressor to iteratively refine the course estimation to add back the fine details. By using a pre-trained latent space, we constrained our estimation into human motion subspace that only contains natural human poses. Here is the complete pipeline from videos, feature extractor, coarse motion estimation, and fine motion estimation. We demonstrate the effectiveness of our framework on various 3D post estimation datasets. This includes 3DBW, MPI3D, and Human 3.6 milli. The metrics we use here is the popular MPJPE and PAMPJPE, mean per joint positional error, which measures the positional accuracy of the estimated 3D joints in millimeters. We also adapt acceleration error, which measures the smoothness of the estimated human motion sequence. The acceleration is calculated using finite difference. Overall, our method achieves the best acceleration error while remain competitive in the joint position error. Here we show our quantitative result, com comparing with the state-of-the-art method VIBE. We rendered estimated human motion against a plain background for better observation. Our method MEVA can drastically reduce the jittery behavior recovered re uh, and recover natural looking human motion. MEVA is also more stable and does not have the sudden flipping behavior.
Mayfa can also handle occlusions better and stable under occlusion. Mayfa can also recover natural and coherent motion from dynamic scenes. Comparing with ground truth, Meva can also hold its own. To better verify the effectiveness of our method, we conduct extensive ablation studies. First, we study the chorus defined breakdown of human motion. MEMA benefits from an explicit breakdown of chorus and fine motion using a temporal compressive step that captures the overall motion from a video. But just how much motion is recovered in this chorus step? Here, the MEVA VAE only model shows the result of the chorus motion estimation and achieves competitive MPJPE as the previous state of the art method that has the best acceleration error, HMMR. MEVA also benefits from using a pre trained motion VAE's latent space. Using this pre learned subspace constrains the estimated motion sequences to be natural and plausible. The MEVA, without using a pre-trained VAE model, shows the results if the model is trained from end to end from scratch. Here we can see the model achieves worse performance and it can also result in unnatural human gates. Another natural approach to improve performance is post-processing. Here we implemented a simple post-processing step, average filtering. From the result, it is clear that average filtering can help reduce the acceler acceleration error for both MEVA and VIBE while slightly affecting the accuracy. It is also conceivable that more sophisticated methods, such as solving a constrained optimization problem, can further improve the results. Nonetheless, we only compared with feedforward methods without any post-processing, since these approaches are complementary to feedforward methods and would be beneficial to all of them. Here we show some failure cases. MEVA process videos using a sliding window. Input video sequences are split into chunks of 90 frames for processing. Inconsistency can sometimes be observed at a 90 frame interval. This can be solved by using an overlapping sliding window, but we count that as a post-processing step. Also, occluded body parts can still be very challenging. So to conclude, state-of-the-art state of 3D human pose estimation methods can often recover jittery pose and unnatural human motion sequences. And our approach, MEVA, can achieve both temporally smooth and accurate 3D human pose estimation. Extensive experiments on various data sets show that our method is robust and it can be applied to in-the-wild data. Some future directions include, right now, the model is limited to only estimating human poses and does not model facial expression and hand poses, which can be useful for downstream applications. Also, occluded body parts can still be challenging and needs more work. Thank you so much for your attention. And please check out the paper and our website for more details.